What should you do when asked for a last minute date? And women, I gotta tell you, the answer is obviously A, readily accept, because them eggs are drying up and you're not getting any younger. Boom, boom, ba jump, boom, boom, boom. Greetings, all you temporarily fallen saints. Welcome to my actually spiritual life with Sister Jensen. Now today, we've got a special treat. A viewer sent in some dating advice that she received when she was in Young Women's. Back in around 2004, 2005. So the first part of this dating advice is a quiz. A dating quiz. Now, she didn't send me the answer key. So we won't have that, but luckily, I've taken everything I know from dating from my hero, Wendy Nelson. Now just remember, this advice is for women and girls only, so boys, back off. I'll start off now, question number one. What would you do if his competition calls while he's there? Would you A, chat a while, B, be brief, or C, say, sorry, wrong number? AKA lie. If my date's in the room especially, I would I would go with A, chat a while. Um because there's nothing quite so riveting to a young boy as being made jealous. So make him jealous, girls, keep him on his toes. And as we all know, there's no greater motivator to be a worthy priesthood holder than jealousy. Question number two. It is your first date with John. You are ready and waiting. What should you do? A. Masturbate. Wait. Sorry, no, that was a smudge. A. Keep him waiting 10 minutes. B. Answer the door. C. Make a grand entrance. Oh, girl, you need to keep him waiting. Now, there's nothing more attractive to a young man than being annoyed with a girl who is perpetuating the stereotype that the girl's never ready on time. Trust me, I learned this all from a 55-year-old virgin. Question number three. If Tom asks where you'd like to go, what do you do? A. Say, I don't care. B. Choose the most expensive restaurant you know. Or C. Have an idea or two. Now, clearly, they didn't try to make this one difficult. Because B. Choose the most expensive expensive restaurant you know. Obvious. I like to think of it this way. The more expensive the meal, the bigger your alimony check will be after your first divorce. Question number four. You thought the date was for a movie, so you dressed to the halt. He arrives in jeans, ready for a, uh-oh. Ready for a wee-wee roast. What do you do? A. Insist on the movie? B. Tell him off? Or C. Smile and quickly change? So I think the obvious answer here is B. Tell him off. Because I think it's important to be honest in a relationship. And if you plan on being really naggy and irritating in your marriage, you should be really naggy and irritating right away. That's how I did it. Both times. Question number five. What is your behavior on the first date? A, play it dumb. B, be too, too clever. Or C, learn his interests. Now I would say we can rule out C because you should already know that his interests are scripture mastery and becoming a temple worthy priesthood holder. Now as for options A and B, it's kind of a toss up. Because I've tried being too, too clever, but it usually just comes off as I'm playing dumb. I don't know why that is. Now, girls, you may not understand yet, but the answer is A, play it dumb. Because men like dumb women, I think. Question number six. At the end of a late date, what do you do? A, say goodnight at the door. B, invite him into the house. C, Thank him? Well, girls, this is a late date, so you definitely don't invite him into the house because you know when the Holy Ghost goes to bed. You also don't want to say goodnight at the door because that invites a situation wherein you might kiss. So I want to steer clear of that. 
No, ma'am, no. You thank him and you leave. Question number seven. Should you break a date with Jim? A. For the football captain. B. For a special dance. C. For a blind date. Wait a minute. Is there a right answer? What are you like, supposed no, to learn from this? Date. See, I'm not really sure how to answer this one, so we're gonna go with A because I'm pretty sure that the football captain is the most likely out of these three things to be the seminary class president. Plus, Jim is, uh, not the captain of the football team. Tough break, Jim. Better luck next time. Question number eight. What should you do when asked for a last minute date? A, readily accept. B, apply with the nerve. Or C, think it over. And women, I gotta tell you, the answer is obviously A, readily accept, because them eggs are drying up and you're not getting any younger. Plus, it's another meal you don't have to pay for, obviously. Question number nine. On a double date, you date leaves you cold, but the other fellow looks most appealing. What do you do? <laughs> Who wrote this? So, I'll be honest, I'm not completely sure what's happening here. Uh, if it means leaves you cold in the sense that there's no chemistry, or leaves you cold in that he's one of those bastards that think that you need to bring your own coat because you knew the weather was going to be cold. Anyway, A, concentrate on your date anyway. B, make eyes with the other fellow. Or C, sit back and ignore them all. You know, this is a really tough one for me because I would love to sit back and ignore them all because that's the most passive aggressive thing you could do, but also have to make eyes with the other fellow because leave no stone unturned. There will be other best friends. There won't be other boyfriends. Well, I guess there will. So those were the nine questions on the quiz. Now let's tally them up to see how I did. And it looks like Sister Jensen gets a million percent. Yeah. Thank you. So as some bonus content, the viewer who sent this to us also sent Attach some dating advice that was given to her as well. So strap in and get ready. Bring out the best in him. It's the little things that count. If a boy drives to your house and blasts the horn for you, ignore it. If he doesn't come to the door, go out and explain that you'd like him to come in for a minute. Get in the car, bitch! Excuse me. When you pick up your coat to leave, hold it toward him. If he doesn't reach for it, you may even say, will you help me with my coat, please? This is one that's always helped me. Act like you're not able to do simple things like putting on your coat or opening up a car door, or that you're entitled and deserve to have it done for you. This is the kind of thing boys find attractive. Helplessness. Complete and utter helplessness. When you go to his car, chat with him until he opens the door for you. He'll take the hint. See, I really like this. This is good advice here. Never, ever, ever be straightforward with what you want in a relationship. Don't tell him what you want. Make him guess. Make him try to read your mind. That's what men are for. That's what relationships are all about. Plus, it's a win-win, because when he can't read your mind, because no one can read your mind, you have free reign to be as angry with him as you want and treat him like garbage. When you arrive at your destination, wait for him to go around the car and help you out. And women, be stubborn, okay? I once spent three hours in a car because my date didn't come around and open the door for me. And as a call back to the last piece of advice, he couldn't read my mind. He didn't know that I was completely helpless and un unable to open the door myself. So he was confused, so I had free reign to just be angry with him the whole night. Plus, it gives you the option to guilt them into other things like giving you more gifts, a more expensive dinner, or more dates in the future, or an entire marriage and three kids. At the entrance to a building, stand aside so he can open the door. If it's a revolving door, step into one of the sections and let him follow in the next as he pushes the door. See, now this is really good because when I first started reading to stand aside and let him open the door, my first thought was, what, what if it's a revolving door? 
They didn't answer if it's a revolving door. Turns out they did. Let him believe he's the big strong man and able to open those doors that your weak girl arms just aren't capable of. You'll be temple married in two months time for sure. If you're laden with books or a heavy article, ask your date to help you if he doesn't offer. This one's double jeopardy because not only do you get a chance to see his muscles, you also don't have to deal with carrying your own sh**. Shiz. Crap. If your subtle hints don't register, appeal to his ego instead. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> the lady's a master in being a manipulative ass. Appeal to his ego instead. Be quick to compliment any little courtesy he shows. I like the way you helped me into the car. Some boys never think of it. So when complete pats of aggression doesn't work, go for semi-passive aggression. <laughs> if none of these things work, use reverse psychology. That's what I always do. Say things like, I don't think you can open the door for me. Uh, I don't think you can hold this heavy article I have on me. So to sum this all up, I would say if you wanted just a condensed sentence as to how to attract men is to be an entitled B word. Well, I hope this was helpful to you all. I mean, who am I kidding? Of course it was helpful. It's just a lot of you don't have the light of Christ anymore, so the light of Sister Jensen will have to do for now. Now for the last part of this video, as the song rolls, I'm gonna sit over here by the like button, passively wait for you to press it. You pressing it? That didn't work? I'll appeal to your ego. Mm, if only a big strong man could press the like and subscribe button. So many men don't do that. I waited in the car for three hours. I could do this. <laughs>